Asian Counter-Strike has been a pretty interesting story uh, all these years. Like Counter-Strike has always been kind of a Western esports. It's been more famous and bigger in North America and in Europe. And when it comes to Asian teams, it was a small handful of teams that really made an impact in the international scene. We had a WNV from China. We had Tai Lu later in around 2009, 10. Koreans, of course, Luna Takai, Project KR, as it was known later as uh, Eastro, we made Fox. <laughs> These were teams who really stepped up and managed to challenge some of the best teams we saw in, uh, in, in, in the world, in Europe, in North America, even against some of the, uh, the original Brazilian MIBR, for example. They actually struggled against some of these Asian teams. It took a long time for Asian Counter-Strike to you know, ever really make an impact in this national scene. And to be honest, in CSGO, we really haven't seen a team who's, who's managed to reach the, the heights that some of the original 1.6 teams made, like, like WNV and like uh, the Koreans. Now, this can be due to various factors. Obviously, one of the biggest things is Asia is, is a massive place. It is a massive continent. There's so many uh, regions, like unlike North America, which is basically the United States of America, you have Canada, South America is primarily Brazil, then you have Europe where the you know, countries are smaller and, and the internet's not a problem at all over there. And you know, it's more, it's a more uh, closed environment, so to speak. And then we have Asia, we have the Middle East, we have India and South Asia, we have Southeast Asia, so many countries over there. And then we have, of course, China on its own, uh, East Asia, Mongolia, which doesn't, well, they say it's East Asia, but you know, it's on its own area, part of the world. And then we have the Australians, of course. So many different countries far apart from each other, but all clumped under you know, the Asian region, so to speak. The first issue obviously is distance. Uh, because of the number of uh, teams and the number of uh, countries involved, it's, it's really hard to have online tournaments. If you look at most events that take place in Asia, it's mostly online events and obviously uh, ping is going to be a massive factor, latency is going to be a big factor. So many teams there you know, who might actually be good on LAN, which is the mecca of Counter-Strike. LAN has always been, in my opinion, the mecca of Counter-Strike. They would struggle, of course, when it comes to you know, online tournaments and sometimes it's not fair as well. We'll find teams playing with like 200 ping, uh, playing against teams who have a single digit ping for example, and you really can't judge teams based purely on online performances. And when it comes to LAN events, are far and few in between because it is expensive. You're talking about teams traveling from distant parts of the world, from, from Korea traveling to Singapore, from, uh, from Dubai traveling all the way to China. There's a lot of money involved and most tournament organizers would be like, eh, you know, might as well stick with the MOBA games, might as well stick with Dota 2 and uh, League of Legends maybe, uh, you know, which are already pretty big as well. And also because it is a free-to-play game. And in Asia, you gotta also understand the, you know, the, the culture is very different. People rather play in land cafes and all these PC banks, for example, in Korea. So they would rather, you know, play the game which is already installed in those PCs. And the cafes, they wouldn't want to install a game where they have to pay $15 perhaps. It, it is cheap, but no one's gonna really gonna pay for it when they have free games out there. So, and even after the, the death, so to speak, of 1.6, there were a lot of free, free Counter-Strike clones in Asia where many people actually transitioned to from 1.6. And it's only around 2015 that Asians started to take notice of CSGO. And that is when we started seeing some teams starting to you know, pick up the game. EU was one of the first teams from Asia to play internationally.
apart from one or two of these teams, we never saw uh, many teams transition into Counter-Strike Global Offensive, but the game is Global Offensive. So over time, you know, seeing the success of so many teams coming out, the, the one team that comes to my mind has to be SK Gaming or Luminosity as we know it back then, or Keith Stars when it just came out, right? Fallen is leading this bunch of people no one had heard of coming up and within a year of them playing the first major, the major champions. Luminosity winning their first major championship. Now that is a story that inspires a scene. And that's the thing what Asia needs. They need inspirational stories. They need a team that can come out, challenge everyone and, and beat them, beat the world. And that is what I feel is lacking in Asia. Every region has their own problems. If you look at, for example, China, they have a lot of big esports organizations. China is a very, very big esports country where it is esports is loved. It is uh, it's embraced by the people as well. But despite all that, there is a very minimal talent pool when it comes to Counter-Strike Global Offensive in China. Apart from the top three teams or maybe the top four teams, there aren't that many players to pick and choose from. On the other hand, you have Southeast Asia, which have many countries, many smaller countries, but each country has one or two really good players, but they don't have the support, they don't have the organizations behind them, they don't have the money behind them, and neither do they have the teammates. And then when you look at, for example, uh, the Middle East, for example, they have some pretty good teams, they have some pretty good players, but there's absolutely no tournaments happening there. Then you have Australia, which is some other part of the world. Uh, they have to play amongst themselves. And it's, the, it's a classic case of you know, being stuck in a region, having to play each other. And end of the day, no matter how much you study other teams, no matter how much you study or read or watch Counter-Strike, you have to have some experience playing against each other. The first team to really break out from the Asia Oceanic region was of course Renegades. And uh, you know, they've moved on to better things. They've moved to North America. Uh, and we're starting to see a trend right now in Asia with Chinese teams picking up some Southeast Asian teams. Uh, the biggest pickup was Benta being picked up by Tai Lu, which, which is huge. I mean, that's going to obviously affect their communication, the way the team is built up, but they were willing to overlook the language barriers. They were willing to work on their comms, work on the language barriers, just because they felt this is a guy who could put our team out there. And we did see in the Asia minor, Tai Lu, they fought all the way from the bottom of the lower brackets to reach the grand finals. I think that is setting a re really good trend, so to speak, for most Asian teams. We have Kaze getting picked up by Flash Gaming. We have a Singaporean team, Dreamscape, getting picked up by a Chinese organization, for example. And I think this is a change for the good where we actually can have potential super teams coming out from Asia, which can actually challenge the rest of the world. <laughs> Considering that Asian Counter-Strike, at least in Global Offensive, started pretty late compared to the international scene, it was only in 2015 that we started seeing a few teams starting to make their impact out there, starting with Kiyu from China, but then we had Skyred from Vietnam, there was CyberZen who played, it was Tyler. So it's only been less than two years, in fact, since we've seen uh, the, the international audience has seen Asian Counter-Strike on the, on the international stage. I really wouldn't be surprised, along with the launch of Counter-Strike Global Offensive officially in China by Perfect World, I really wouldn't be surprised if the sleeping giant that is Asian Counter-Strike one day does, in the pretty near future, might actually wake up, challenge some of the best teams, and hopefully might finally live up to the legacy set by some of the, the best teams who have ever have played Counter-Strike 1.6, like the Koreans and WNV from China.